Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Storm Collectibles Tekken 7 Kazuya figure, which is one that, I mean, I'm not the biggest Tekken fan. I never really got into it. I've liked the character designs, but that's that's about it. But I uh, am a fan of Storm Collectibles, so I thought it would be nice to review this, and I know you guys are too, and a lot of you, very many of you, are Tekken fans, so this seemed like the perfect thing to review to wrap up the year. So, it is very much like some of the other Storm Collectibles figures we've seen. A couple interesting things to talk about, but all in all, it's um, it's probably what you might expect with, a, like I said, a few things we may need to talk about. So let's go ahead and get him off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about, let's say to the top of his head, about 19 centimeters. And if you want to count his hair, obviously it depends on how you have him posed, but it does stick up just a little bit more than that. And to the top of where his head may roughly be, let's say seven and three eighths inches. So that gives you a decent size comparison. If you wanna see what he looks like up against Heihachi, too bad, no, I'm just kidding, it's right here. Let's let's take a look and kiss. Nope, they're about the same height, pretty close, pretty close. So that's probably okay. Again, I'm not the biggest wealth of knowledge when it comes to Tekken, so scaling could be off a little bit. You guys can let me know in the comment section below, that's fine, I haven't looked up there official canonical heights, so I don't really care that much about it, but you guys can let me know. And if you wanna check out some of my other Storm Collectibles reviews, which is basically everything they've released in this type of figure, uh, I do have a playlist for that, and you may wanna, may wanna see what else they have going on. So this guy looks pretty good at first glance. I like the pants overall. When you get in tight on the fire on either side, there's some questionable paint issue. It seems like the pigment is not uniformly distributed across the metallic gold, so you see like these little specks of orange kind of going on, but that's only if you look pretty close or really pay attention to it. Otherwise, the metallic red and, and the very shiny gold look very nice. Same is true on this side. We do have a little bit of that issue going on, but unless you're looking really close at it, you're not gonna notice it. So I tend to like it more than I dislike it. I really like the saturation pop that we have, obviously we don't have much color here, but I also like the metallic up against the matte finish of the rest, so that is very nice. The skin tone is, is a bit orange. It seems a bit orangey, but not like startlingly orange. I think it'll be okay, but it does stand out as having kind of a different skin tone than, than what you may expect. If you want to compare him to Heihachi, you can see it's a bit, it's got a bit more of the orange going on. It's not terrible, but you may notice it. So that's why I want to point that out so you guys are aware. And then the scars that are on him are sculpted. They're sculpted nicely, very subtly, but they are sculpted. And then they're painted nicely too. They look like what they're supposed to look like. So that's pretty good. The gloves are painted nicely. So you can see there, pretty cool. The paintwork across the belt, difficult to land that kind of paint job effectively, but they did a good job. And then the paint job for the head, it's clean, it's good. He certainly has a bit of a baby face going on. He doesn't have anywhere near the mean, slightly older type of look that he normally has, but otherwise it's pretty good. So for the aesthetics, I'm gonna give this guy, uh, let's say, I'm gonna give this guy eight baby faces out of 10. It's a, it's an overall pretty aesthetically pleasing figure. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into the accessories. For the heads, we have three total. We have the neutral height that comes on him in the package, one where he's kind of grinning, just barely, and then one where he's got kind of a slightly open mouth type of grin. And they're all sculpted well enough. I'd like to point out that he does have the two different color irises. He's got the red eye on the left side. I think it looks pretty good. It could be maybe a little bit of a brighter red, but it's so small it's gonna be hard to notice, so I think that's okay. We have a bunch of hands. We have two fist hands that come on them in the package, two style pose hands, two grappling kind of hands, and then two wide open hands. And then lastly, we have this blue translucent energy effect, which would go on his hand for like an uppercut type move, as far as I can tell, and it's done pretty well. It looks pretty nice. Fairly saturated, nicely transparent. I like it. And that's it. Not a whole lot of accessories, though I don't know what else you would really want. So I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 accessory for the accessories. Three heads, bunch of hands, energy effect. That's more than sufficient. I am okay with that. However, it could have easily gotten top marks if it had a display stand because normally I don't care that much about that. But this guy kind of needs it. So let's go ahead and get into the articulation. For the head, we have our double ball peg, which we are now used to from Storm. Ball peg in the head, ball peg in the neck. You can move it around pretty well. You can see the neck flex is some. It works, it works. You can lean the head nicely. 
I like that. And it doesn't look as scrunched down as it has in the past on some other figures. Of course, you do have a tube inside the head here. I'll just show you here for the sake of convenience. You have a giant tube in there that holds the ball peg. So if you wanted to lift the head up a little bit, you could, but I don't think you need to on this guy. I like, like the overall proportions on this guy for the most part. For the shoulders, we have a ball peg that connects the arm to the body inside, into the internal skeleton. This is just a floating piece right here to fill the gap. So it wiggles around a decent bit. We have our ball hinge for the shoulder itself, and you get up to horizontal without using the internal ball peg very much at all, so that's pretty good. If you wanted to, eh, I guess you can't really lift it too much higher anyway, but horizontal's fine. You shouldn't really need to raise his arms that way. Now we do have quite a stiff joint in here, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna be a problem. So you can rotate, of course, around that ball peg. You have your bicep swivel here. Again, it's kind of stiff, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna be a problem. Double jointed elbow, but just 90 degrees. Definitely could afford to have a better range there. And then for the wrists, we have our floating uh, little soft piece right here. We have the ball peg that connects into the forearm, and then we have a ball hinge on the outside, which also is, of course, a straight peg. So really good range for the wrists. Haven't had any issues with the ball pegs coming out, or uh, yeah, ball pegs coming out. So that's pretty good. And there's a closer look if you wanna see how that functions. And these, by the way, I didn't mention this in the other part, but I love the fact that his gloves are glossy. It looks very nice up against the matte finishes of the other parts of the figure, so that's pretty cool. And they're nice and soft material. For the torso, I think it could be a double. I can't quite tell which part's rotating, which part is just squishing because there's soft plastic on here. Could be a double, might be a single, but you get decent enough range. You can lean him back, and you can lean him not so far forward. They seem to have been lacking on the forward range lately in the storm line. Not that it's hyper necessary, but it definitely would be better to be able to lean him forward at this joint. We'll get to this one in a second. Side to side works decent enough. Better than most figures, but not as good as many of the even storm figures that we've seen. Rotation is fine. Lower torso, he has plenty of lean there. And pretty decent lean going forward. So that's why I said you can lean him forward, but I like to distribute my leaning across the two joints just so it looks a little bit more natural, but that's definitely okay. And you do get your rotation there, leaning side to side there. Pretty decent joint down here. We have had some tightness issues or looseness issues. This guy seems to be somewhere right in the middle. His pants are soft at the crotch. Obviously this is soft and you can rotate it if you want to. Uh, but the hips, we have the basically what's now the uh, standard storm design, which has a hinge and a swivel. So that's the hinge going all the way out to the side. Pretty good, basically the splits, not bumping into the torso at all, so that's very nicely executed. Get a little bit of squeaking, but I don't think it's gonna be enough to be a problem. Bringing the legs forward, you can see the crotch piece kind of flexes, but plenty of range there, no problem. Going back, a little bit of tightness, and you can see the butt just kind of gets, just gets kind of mushed up in there and you're gonna to have to kind of play with that if you want to, but without me even really trying, we got him doing the front and back splits, no problem. So that's pretty good. And then we do have a thigh swivel, minimal range on the thigh swivel, but it's there, so that's okay. For the knees, double jointed knee, maybe the best of the bulky type of knees that we've seen from Storm. We've seen some thinner knees that work pretty nicely, but usually the bulky ones are about 90, but these this guy's got pretty good range. I like it, I like it, that's pretty good, but, we can't end on a happy note because the ankles are pretty much just rubbish. They're terrible. So there's a swivel under here somewhere which allows the lower leg to rotate, which is fine, that's always helpful. And then we have our standard hinge in the ankle, which gives us a little bit of range going back, which is sufficient, I think, but going forward, nope, no range at all. And then as far as an ankle rocker goes, I can't really get it to do anything more than that, which is almost none. So that's definitely a problem. We do have a toe hinge, and that's okay. It should be okay enough for some light posing, but generally speaking, you don't want to rest a figure on a toe hinge because they're not big enough to support a figure's weight. So the posability in the ankles is very detrimental to posing this guy without a display stand of some kind to keep him up. Because without being able to bring the feet forward, even standing him straight up can be problematic. You're going to really have to kind of finesse this guy to get him to pose well, which is, you know, that's kind of a big, big deal. It's like I mentioned in one of my reviews the other day, the ankles are not equal to the other joints when it comes to articulation. You need to have good ankles or it's going to be a problem. So it is a problem on this guy. Most of the other articulation is really good, so that's going to help him with his rating a little bit, but the ankles are definitely a downside. So 
If I could rate him individually, parts of him would be like an eight maybe or a nine. And the ankles would be like a two. I'm gonna average it out for the articulation. This is not really an average because I'm not weighting everything equally. I'm gonna give him a six and a half out of 10 for articulation, just because the ankles are such a bummer. I'm so very pleased with so much of the rest of it. So if you wanna put him in like a, like a very dynamic pose and use a, use a display stand or something, you won't have any trouble. It'll be fine because you won't have to have him actually resting all of his weight on his feet. But if you wanna have him in just a standing pose, forget about it, it's gonna be a problem. All right guys, so that'll do it for this review. I guess if I had to give it, and I don't, but I'm going to choose to do so. Uh, if I had to give it a final rating, I'm gonna give this guy an eight out of 10. I pretty much like all of it, except for those ankles. That's about it, it is aesthetically pleasing. It's a definitely a solid release. Lots of these things have been approved upon across the line as we've gotten to this point. So that's why a lot of him works very nicely. It's just those dang ankles, they're holding him back. So eight out of 10 is where we're at. Uh, thanks for watching guys. I have a lot of reviews like this and a whole lot of reviews about all kinds of other stuff on the channel. I've got like 4,000 videos. So you may wanna, you may wanna skim the channel and see what you might've been missing. But I do have reviews up just about every single day. So if you haven't subscribed, you might wanna do that. Uh, give the video a thumbs up if you haven't already. And uh, make sure you come back for all that good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.